This week's episode brought to you by GoDaddy. This is Jeremy filling in for Brian on this episode of the Linux Action Show. This week on the Linux Action Show! Has an Unreal Trojan opened your Linux box's back door? Novell strikes a major deal that just might keep the cash flowing. We'll give you the details. We've got some official news on Chrome OS and some not so official news as well. Canonical announces plans to build a new tablet OS. Wait, what? We discuss. Then it's our action review of XBMC and why it makes Linux the first class media center it is. Oh, this week on the Linux Action Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 12, Episode 5. My name is Chris, and with me today is Jeremy. Hey there, Chris. Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> what runs Linux? The Bang Nano Note runs Linux. Check this little baby out, it, and it is little. Yeah, I Nano mean, the, is a good description. The screen is only three inches. I'll show you some pictures in a bit after we show you some of the, uh, the specs, specs here. here. It's um, interesting, right? It's got a 366 megahertz X-Burst, MIPS-compatible CPU. That's, like, not a mainstream CPU, I don't think. No, and interesting. that seems, like, really... Yeah, it I seems bet it's really cruddy, but... <laughs> well, I bet it's part of their secret sauce for getting low power, because this thing yeah. is really... We'll show you some pictures. It's really tiny, and... Uh, it, yeah, let it, me get you here a size comparison of this thing side-by-side side with a can of Coke. Look at that. <laughs> it's, it's actually smaller than a can of Coke. Yeah. Uh, but it's got a full little... Well, not a full keyboard, but it's got... You know, it's almost like the BlackBerry-style keyboard where there's multiple keys. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wild. Now, you were telling me something about the hardware on this guy, though. The hardware is, well, the hardware is not very good. I'm, I don't think it's not the super specs awesome. are all that great. But the really cool thing about this that I think you guys will get a kick out is actually the developer of this thing, a company called Key, QI, um, they are into this concept of open source hardware, basically. Yeah, yeah. They call they, it copy left yep. as opposed to copy right. Yeah. And it's basically they are going to... Um, fully document all the hardware that's used on this platform. And I think they're trying to use technology that has like open drivers available mm -hmm. for it and stuff like that. So that's really cool. So they're doing they're doing this little cool like cuz th that mobile portable space there's just a ton of technology there. Sure. Oh, uh, there's an image there with a guy holding it too. Um, and and you know to bring that down to this hardware level here is just so cool in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, and and they've they've recently gotten Debian running on it, so you don't have to use like their flavor of Linux or anything like that. You could right. you could run a standard Debian distribution. That's mm -hmm. pretty neat. A solid runs Linux, sir. I honestly don't know what you'd use something like this for, but I mean, you know, it, it's uh, like a tiny they, netbook. I think I remember hearing that they're um, they have a very focused market goal, like uh, people out in the field, like. Uh, street surveyors and stuff like that, or consensus takers, where you just need this little tiny device with very limited just input. Take notes, basically. Or, yeah, maybe just felt like pre-identified fields and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Exactly, notes, that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, cool enough, I think. Right. And, uh, and oh, mention the price. Oh yeah, it's only a hundred bucks. You know, frequently we come on with these, or Chris comes on with these devices that are a little pricey, a little high on the end when they're first coming out. But this is only a hundred dollars, ninety-nine dollars. So you know what that means? Not a baby's first Linux machine. Not a bad one. Not, Not a bad, a bad one. baby's first Linux machine. Yeah, you can even get a ten pack for <laughs> for ninety nine ninety. Yeah, you can buy ten of them. <laughs> I think it's pretty neat. I, I don't. I think that I don't know. I just we came across it and Jeremy said we've got it. We've got to do this as yeah, yeah, Linux. Yeah. And I was like, I, I agree. <laughs> All right, now I have got a really cool Android app that literally is very likely to save you hundreds of dollars. I like that. I am not kidding. Uh, but before we do that, let's say holler to our buddies over at GoDaddy.com. Now, Jeremy, you know about GoDaddy.com, right? Heard of them, yeah. If you go over to GoDaddy.com and uh, use our code Linux you, at checkout, you can save 10% off any order. And if you use our code Linux20, you'll save 20% off hosting. And uh, we were just talking. We've got a little blog project in mind. Mm -hmm. And we thought uh, we've got a few different Linux uh, servers that run over at GoDaddy for our mirror system. So we're going to use... Uh, GoDaddy to host this blog system that we're working on. Yeah. And really, honestly, one of the things that really sold us on the idea was just how easy it is to get ramped up to get rolling. It's like that one 
one click install. Yeah, they have their they have their app marketplace where you can go and just deploy applications on your mm -hmm. hosted server like WordPress or Drupal or all these other like actually fairly sophisticated packages that they'll do for you on the back end. So it's really easy. If you've got a great idea, you just go to their site and basically click a few buttons and you're ready to roll with your idea. There you have it. So use our code Linux to save 10% at checkout or Linux 20 to save 20% on your hosting costs. Do Not it. A bad idea do people. it all right let's talk about trapster now this actually isn't an android exclusive and that's one of the reasons i really like this app is it has an iphone app it has a blackberry app and it has an android app I'm coughing right in everybody's face i'm sorry <coughs> it's early you know how that <coughs> <laughs> you know when you I'm, I'm not gonna die i promise right. myself if i'm not gonna die, die. <laughs> if you do die do it on the internet i have always said that if you can do it live you want to do it live that's a good point uh so take a take a look here at trapster i i this this app does exactly what the name kind of implies is it looks for it speeding you? traps. No. Oh. It looks for speeding traps and it overlays the map so you can see what's in your area and it has You big old cheater. It has different visual codes and of course it ties in with your GPS so it knows your GPS location and it'll give you like if they're hidden behind a bush, if they are <laughs> undercover cop, it'll give you all this kind of stuff. It and on the Android where it has a leg up on the iPhone version is it can run in the background. Now this will drain your battery but it's so, like the next generation radar detector right <laughs> exactly and i i used to be a radar detector guy yeah and so only i really only just use this to check the traffic before you head out or plug it in like on my droid oh, has yeah. like a car mount where it right. plugs in um because I, I tried this i didn't know it ran in the background because i used to have it on the iphone and so it, when you on the iphone there's no multi right, right. so you close it it'd be closed yeah this guy i, I was playing it with during a meeting because i was super <laughs> bored <laughs> You know, so I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here flipping through this application, and I closed it. You have the most exciting job in the I, world. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so I close it, and I set it down on the desk. Well, like an hour later after the meeting, I picked it up, and the phone's hot. It's <laughs> physically hot. And I'm like, what the heck? I look at it, and like it's been tracking me this whole time. But what it's supposed to do is, you know, you're driving down the street, yeah. and this thing's supposed to be able to look at what's coming up, and then give you an audible alert with voice packs. I've got freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> look out! There's a cop. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> I wish I could have brought my Android phone out here, but it's actually upstairs charging because... Because um, uh, you were using Trapster. <laughs> I, I was. <laughs> yeah. I drained it completely dead. <laughs> so, great app. and It's, it's also, got its ups and downs. <laughs> it, oh, the other thing, of course, the other thing they can do since they, since they have your data connection mm -hmm. and they're online already is it also overlays uh, live traffic incidents and conditions over the map as well. So, it's not just about... Uh, oh, an incident. Accidents. So yeah. it's not just about where the cops are at, what if they're hiding. Uh, oh, oh, this is neat too. When you go buy a speed trap, mm -hmm. you can you can tap it because it just overlays on top of a Google map, and you can thumbs up or thumbs down it. So everyone who gets stuck in traffic or uh, or pinged by a cop in that area is mm -hmm. that has this app is voting if that's still a legit hotspot or not. Oh, so it's crowdsourced too on its accuracy. That's so it's sort neat. of like a Wikipedia of of speeding traps that's that, with you all the time. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then the, to, to be able to overlay accidents and real-time traffic data is also just is really actually kind of nice. So that's what you meant by saving hundreds of dollars. Yeah. You're just not going to get tickets. You're not going to get a ticket. <laughs> or maybe you'll save time in traffic, and now you can go do something more productive. Or you could drive safe, Chris. I'm just saying. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think if you've got an Android app and you want us to feature it on the show, I'd love to hear about it. So hit me up on Twitter. I am twitter.com slash Chris L-A-S. All nice. right. All right, with that said, let's do the news. What's new in the news this week? Well, Chris, this week we have raised concerns of a Trojan virus dun, dun, in dun. Linux being uh, distributed through Unreal. Yeah. Online gaming yep. is your nemesis. So this, is, <laughs> this one I think is particularly interesting mainly because... Uh, the, according to the reports, it's been an issue since November. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, uh, anything, any version, anybody that's that's more than downloaded. six months that yeah. it's been on their servers. And it's been on real version 3.2.8.1. They found out that somebody replaced the file on their FTP server mm -hmm. uh, with a Trojan. With a backdoor that could potentially... Now, here's the thing. Uh, we were talking about this a little before we did the story. Kind of don't think it might have affected anybody because yeah. in order for the backdoor to become active, you had to be running it in root. Yeah, you, well, and it was specifically the uh, if you're running an Unreal tournament server on Linux mm -hmm. and you're using the IRC chat backend daemon. I don't know if that's actually used for chat or some other inter-server communications protocol, but it's an IRC server, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to run that as root because on Linux 
you cannot open a port to the network listening for connections unless you have root privileges. Okay. The idea being that way, Joe user can't open up a listening port within a certain range and get get infected. Okay. You can't open some ports, but just generally speaking, you have to be root. So people would run this Unreal Tournament server as root to be able to do just that, and then that's where the infection would be. And they just didn't notice because really that's a pretty limited use case scenario. Mm -hmm. Especially for a little bit older of a well, game. Well, and also want to kind of point out that backdoors generally aren't active. They're basically, they just Sitting. open up your, your computer to be vulnerable. They're waiting for the consumer. So command, then, in yeah. addition to having this on your system, somebody out there would ha have to actively be looking for you to yep. have a vulnerability. Yep. So or 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 if they're, if they're smart, because it is an IRC server communications, it can log into their IRC server and then wait yeah. for a command, reply back through IRC. Like through a bot. So even, it'll be maybe. like, I'm here, I'm yeah. waiting. That's, a, that's really what a bot kind of does. Yeah. Um, but they, they, they've caught it. I, there has been no reports of anybody that's actually been bit with this yet, but I'm sure if you've been downloading Unreal Tournament, if you've done any game servers, might be worth checking out. Yeah. Download Clam IV, they give show it a you, scan. They show you exactly which file was at fault, and they probably tell you how to fix it in this, so you didn't yep. read the entire We'll article. have the links over one. at the show notes. Yep. All right, what's next on the uh, news docket for this VMware week? inks an OEM deal with Novell for SUS Linux. Yeah. You're really excited about this, I am pretty you? excited about this one. Uh, you know... So we've been talking a little bit on and off about uh, the potential that NetWare could be getting bought out or could be selling their assets off. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for OpenSUSE, and they make what I think is a really good enterprise distro, SUSE Enterprise Linux. I've used it in production along with Red Hat, production, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux for years, mm -hmm. and I think it's a pretty good offering. Yeah. Um, now, they just, they're still the number two enterprise Linux distribution. That's just what it is. But they've just struck this deal with VMware, and though this is really cool. Mm -hmm. This looks like it's going to be a certain version of VMware. They're going to ship NetWare, or they're going to ship no uh, SUSE Enterprise Linux with VMware pre-licensed. Right. And it looks like you're going to be able to buy it. You're going to buy VMware, and then they're going to they're going to provide you the updates for Enterprise Linux. You know, I'm not too uh, well versed on the whole enterprise thing mm -hmm. uh, going on here, but it looks like to to kind of draw a correlation, it's kind of like if um, some big PC manufacturer started shipping. A retail box, like like e machine or something, yeah. started shipping with an Ubuntu Live CD right. alongside of it. It's that kind of a deal. Yeah, for, for this the enterprise. Kind of, yeah, in the enterprise market. Yeah, because first of all, VMware is a huge, yeah. huge virtualization player. Mm -hmm. um, and now to be able to buy VMware and have it come essentially with Linux licenses, you're going to be a lot more inclined, I think, to run that. Even in the very rich enterprise, that incentive of free. It's yeah. huge. <laughs> yeah. It is huge. And, um, you know, and it's a weird head trip in, 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 in the enterprise, too, because there's a lot of old school management who says, uh, we're not running Linux because we're not paying for it. Right. I'm not going to trust anything we don't pay for. But mm -hmm. you're paying for VMware. And when you buy VMware, it's coming with this stamp of approval. We approve this Linux here. Run yeah. this Linux. Enjoy this Linux. And I think that's awesome. <laughs> that's yeah. really good for that's really This could good for be potentially a pretty big step for Linux on the... On the server and side for, of things. And for yeah. Novell. And, you know, Novell still ships their own virtualization platform inside uh, SUSE Enterprise. Red Hat ships one. Mm -hmm. But VMware is, um, you know, they're just doing a lot of really cool things in the space right now. And it's, it's, a, it's a cool deal. Yeah. It's cool. All right. I'm, I'm a happy guy about that story. What's next you on are. the news story? Google Chrome OS has confirmed their late fall release. Mm. 2010. It's coming. Really? Yes, it's coming. Now, are you excited about Chrome OS? Let me ask you, what are your thoughts on that? I have um, good and bad thoughts about this. I am kind of excited because I'll be totally honest, and I know that the, there will be some backlash over this. I'm a bit of a Google fanboy. Yeah, it's kind of made my life really simple. I know. That's how I <laughs> feel, too. I don't like that they have everything and know everything about me, and they're a little bit evil. Right. But... That being said, it's such a convenient evil. It is convenient evil. I know, I know. Um, so I'm it's looking like fast food. They're like fast food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate fast food. Yeah, Can't oh, you me tell? Too. Me too. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like the delicious new bacon at Wendy's. I hate mm, that. It's, it's, hate it's that such so, an improvement. I hate that so hard. I know. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm. I'm really intrigued by the idea of cloud computing, uh, which is kind of what Google Chrome is built around. Yeah, for sure. Chrome OS. Um, I think it's kind of weird, though, because I think if you're going to go with cloud computing, you kind of got to go all the you way. You got to go all in. Yeah. Yeah. You got to go all in. You got to get rid of uh, local storage, except when it's absolutely necessary. Offline editing and stuff like that. Like um, backup copies and stuff like that. But those should be wiped when you have network access. Wow. You know? See, I'm, a, I'm a kind of fan of Ubuntu One Dropbox combo where I've got a local cache. And it's always mine still. But, you know, well, there's a speed thing We use the there. heck out of it for Jupyter Broadcasting. We use the heck out of Google Docs. Yeah. 
I mean, we really, and Dropbox. And Dropbox. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah they both kind of serve a different purpose. We use Dropbox to distribute large video files, art, and, and artwork, and show things like themes. That. And yeah. we used we use Google Docs for more like show preparation mm-hmm. and, and We've whatnot. Got our Google Docs up right now for sure. show notes. Um, so now Chrome OS, one of the things that they are thinking about including, or at least has been rumored, is the ability, they're going to call it desktop portal or something like this. Now this is totally rumored at this stage, but what folks are saying is that you're going to have an essentially an instant on remote desktop connection back to your uh, machine. I'm assuming a Windows box One of the things point. I like about cloud computing is that idea that your machine yeah. is not in your hand. Right. It's it's not the thing that you're interacting have you with. Seen like the, have you seen like log me in one, two, three, and stuff like that? They use this little agent and it proxies yeah. the connection. Well, I've seen so you use them. You don't have to use any file. You don't have to configure your firewall mm-hmm. or anything like that. You just have to have a username and a password and it has to be authenticated. So it's something you know, something you have. So it's a, like an ATM type of authentication, mm-hmm. and then it bridges these connections and, and brings you right to your desktop. Yep, That's what they're saying they're going to do, that kind of thing in, in uh, Chrome OS. <laughs> that could be really cool. As long as they design it well. I mean, having an OS with that, that really makes me uh, concerned about security mm-hmm. on the OS in general. Totally agree. Um, but... You know, maybe they've got all that figured out. Google should well, be and, pretty and, good and, at security at this point. Well, let's be honest. I mean, are you awesome with security? Am I? Yeah, are you Are you awesome with your security setup at home? I like to think I'm above average, but I don't okay. think I'm awesome. I don't have it ports locked down right. on my firewall but or theoretically, anything like that. theoretically, yeah. now I am playing devil's advocate here in a major way, but mm-hmm. theoretically, right, Google loses everything the minute they lose our trust. So they have teams yeah. and teams of guys and gals and, and the most the most brilliant PhDs in the world focused on yeah, security. Yeah, that, that's right? kind of what I'm saying. They've got to be good at it. So they're going to be better at it than you and I, in theory. Yeah. Well, God, I hope so. <laughs> but, uh, but the difference is, the difference is, uh, we're out, our interest in is, uh, is number one, is us. Their right, interest right. is going to be Google, followed by as much as possible us. Right. So there's always that. But yeah. I think Chrome OS is interesting. I, don't, I, I still am not clear on where it fits in with Android. Right, because it's another device platform, and then we should jump. I know you've got the next story is uh, it's a canonical one, right? It might be we might be going out of order a little bit, but there's actually a, I've got an HP story if you're up for it. Let's actually they all kind of tie together. Let's okay. do that. So let's talk about this HP story you've got here. Yeah, HP has acquired the Linux fastboot technology. Yeah, and this is a company that has been building this specifically for. Uh, what's their? They, they've got their name on there. If you if you can find it, it's uh, they. It, I, I don't remember if it was. The, it was something that Xandros used to to create their Presto, the Presto. boot environment. Yep. yep. And a couple other. Uh, I think it's like hyperspace. Hyperspace like Linux fast boot technology from that's, Phoenix Technologies. That's what it is. And this yeah. is, I think it accomplishes like nearly instant on Linux booting mm-hmm. via a process of a virtualization. So it's more of resuming a suspended virtual machine than it is actually booting and executing all of yep. the init scripts and wow, stuff. Wow, twelve like that. million dollars for that. I gotta make something like that. You know, I don't know where <laughs> HP's going with this. I don't know if their plan is, is this story on its own struck me as pretty bland. But you said the whole th- the whole th- reason that you've included this is because they've made some other recent acquisitions yeah. that you find interesting. Well, you know, HP made the WebOS acquisition, which is from Palm, which yep. and they're all and they've come out and said, you know, we're looking at it for tablets, we're looking at it for um, devices everywhere from a ten inch tablet down to the little printer screen that people have now mm-hmm. on your printer. And I'm okay. I have mixed feelings about that. It could be really awesome, but all of these things do need some sort of instant on access. Yeah. And additionally, if you can't compete with the iPad on 10 hours, 13 hours of battery life, mm-hmm. so you're going to need to do a deeper power sleep mode because the iPad isn't on because it's sleeping. But perhaps they can't accomplish that with some sort of always on power, so maybe they need we to do We do know that they've had troubles well. with lease uh, uh, sleep and Several different, and they do, and the yeah. and the and the rumor is the HP Slate, which was going to feature Windows Seven, was scrapped because at best in real life it was going to be able to accomplish around three to four hours of battery. Wow! And then when the iPad dropped with with a ten hour battery life, people said, "Okay, we can't ship that." But perhaps your way around that is to do a different type of power management where you're doing more of an off, a fast boot. Yeah, and and of course, and you mentioned on a printer, if you're going to have an OS, you don't want to oh, wait God, a yeah. minute for it. You know, I have a really powerful printer at my house, and it takes sometimes up to two minutes to turn on. Yeah, that's a that's a pain in the butt. And, and these printers, like the one you're talking about, and the one that these corporations have these displays on them that mm-hmm. are fully interactive. You can send me- email to them. It's already. a little computer. I mean, that's yeah. more powerful than some of the computers I played with and, growing and up. And they're talking about putting Web OS on that, which would be so those little printers will be running Linux, mm-hmm. and then you combine that with this fast boot technology. Now I think we're starting to see something that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah. Um, and then that's something too that I'm sure HP HP has bought up these technologies in the past and then licensed <clears> them out. Yeah. So it's not unusual for them to still continue to let offer something like this in the marketplace. 
Uh, should we talk a little bit, too, about this all sort of ties in here. Mm -hmm. uh, what's our next story? Canonical is developing Ubuntu OS for tablets. Yeah. Well, before we get into the actual news, didn't they already have something like this? There was a they net, have a netbook remix, netbook remix, right? And, and I don't know, I don't know where this differs. And if people in the chat room know, I'd, I'd love to hear if you know how this differs from the netbook edition. I was kind because it's all early details right now, so you you kind of read it right and you look at it. And you and I were both going over this, and we're kind of trying to well, clean the details. Two things out of came it. from to my mind right away. One was the netbook remix, and is this going to replace it or what? And the second is, what tablet are they making this for? Actually, it doesn't say in the article that they're it's, they're making it for theoretical hardware that doesn't even exist yet. Yeah, they, they don't even estimate a release date on a tablet that would run this until late in the winter of 2011. <laughs> I that's, just that's 18 months away. Okay, now here's my first reaction when this stuff comes up. I had, I had the same reaction with the Ubuntu Music Store, although less to an extent, but more so to this is. I really feel like sometimes, and I just don't, and I know I did, maybe I just don't understand the business model, and maybe we should have somebody over from Canonical on the show to talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't follow the logic here. It seems to me like the focus is not on building the most amazing desktop Linux experience. And, yeah. and if you look at if you if you if you if you watch and follow <coughs> Mark Shuttleworth as he blogs and as he talks in interviews and stuff like that. It's obvious he does take some inspiration from Steve Jobs and Apple. He tries to take some of the positive inspirations, mm -hmm. uh, their their uh, attention to aesthetics and 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 things like Kinda, that, and some of the showmanship, right? Of the presenting and yeah, everything. making a nice presentation, yeah, and, yeah. Um, Which is, I mean, that's a good thing. It is, it is a really and good it's thing. It's not uh, the good thing about having a and company like in this Linux involved in, in Linux, right? Exactly, is maybe it'll spread, yeah, to more um, yeah. better aesthetics throughout the entire. I, I think maybe, I think maybe that has started to happen, yeah. Um, but one of the things that I would say, another Apple has like a hundred thousand bad things about them. Yeah, and they have like two or three oh, things that, that I can get behind, <laughs> and one of them is they have a laser focus. They just did the Worldwide Developers Conference, a massive conference, sold out. People came from all over the world, mm -hmm. and they talked about one thing: iOS and apps. They have a huge well, and the iPhone four announcement. Well, that's but... what I mean. iOS and the apps and oh, the things okay. around the mobile platform. Okay. They didn't even really talk about the Mac. Because they're right now, they're focused on winning the mobile war. Apple has all resources pointed in that direction, good or bad, whatever. Mm -hmm. Imagine if Canonical, even with their more limited resources, were able to just singularly focus on building the most amazing Linux experience possible. I think we could be doing uh, some really amazing things. In a single market, either desktop or handhelds yeah. or tablets. Or do a desktop and server, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, so that seems pretty obvious to me. Mm -hmm. So then I start to think, maybe they know that. And perhaps the reason that they are doing this kind of stuff is that they are hoping that by throwing this kind of stuff out there, that maybe the future of Linux is more mobile-based. It's kind of a gamble, you know? Yeah. Um, there are no devices. I mean, you look at mobile. They've made a few agreements that are mentioned in the article with big companies like Intel that might be helping them to, to create um, – Right. Devices that would use this. But right. And, you know, honestly, two and a half years ago or so, I was at Ubuntu One, and there was a Intel-powered But now Intel's tablet. on board with Memo and doing the Mego things. So. I know. I don't get it. Now, all of this stuff with Chrome OS, with Memo, with uh, Mego, with Ubuntu, in a way, I kind of look at it almost like evolution. Put it all out there and see what survives the strong, you know, survival of the fittest will eventually make its way out. But if you're the spreading yourself product, too thin, nothing is going to be the fittest. That's the issue. Is right now there is a, there is a couple of ravenous predators out there in the wild mm -hmm. that are eating up our babies like crazy right now. Mm -hmm. And instead of focusing on keeping a couple of babies safe and making them awesome, we children, just keep making more babies. We just making a ton of babies. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Apple comes along and rolls over a million of them in two months and. Android comes along and ro rolls over 100,000 of them every single month. Yeah. And while Android is Linux, I just, where do you fit in this spot, Canonical? And why, I almost get the why feeling, do this now and not focus on your core product? I almost get the feeling that at this point, and maybe it's too early to make this determination, I feel like Android has already won the handheld device Linux world. Yeah. And uh, I know a lot of people way. don't like that. but the, it, People would argue that if you, if you draw the comparison of the very early PC market, there was a lot of PC manufacturers, even some very big mm -hmm. ones of their day that just aren't around anymore. Oh, well, even some of the big ones like Gateway was bought out by so that could happen Alienware to Android. was brought out, bought out by Dell. That could you know? still happen to Apple. That could still happen to Android. There's still a chance. Nobody's going to buy Apple. <laughs> but they could fade away because of their closed market practices and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's possible. And not likely. But 
Well, what I was getting at, though, is wouldn't it make more sense? Like, Ubuntu originally came out as an adaptation of something else. Of Debian. Debian. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it was it just basically took the best of Debian and turned it into a new package. What if Ubuntu or some other major player out there took a similar stance with Android? So they, they Ubuntuized Android like they've done with Debian. Right. That could be sweet. Then you could play off the base that's already there, the strong Android base. That could be really sweet. And then also still be your own thing. So you get the best of both. You take the Ubuntu experience. You make right. these nice, slick interface, these apps, these things that they've done to sort of integrate the experience. Right. right. Yeah. That, that's the direction I think they should go. Instead of reinventing the wheel, take what's out there and just make it Stand awesome. Stand on the shoulder of giants. And, yeah. Take something that's got a ton of momentum. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when Canonical does it right... Ubuntu can just dominate the headlines a lot more mm -hmm. than you'd expect. Yeah. Way more so than any other Linux distro out there. I mean, just go to Dig, go to Linux today, go to all the Linux news sites. Yeah. Ubuntu can own, Ubuntu will make it to Engadget. No other distribution will make it. And if they came out and it was Ubuntu plus Android equal mm -hmm. awesome. Like you Android or something like that. Oh, yeah. you Android. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys, that would, oh man, I would, I would totally put a ROM of that on my Android. Mm -hmm. And these Android devices are just like, you know, okay. Wow, this comparison works so well because it used to be really freaking hard to install Linux on a PC. Yeah, yep, yep. And just like right now, it's not really freaking hard, but you have to kind of know how to enable root mode on your Android device and then flash it with a ROM. Mm -hmm. That sounds hard, but they've actually got some really nice software to do it. But there's comparisons there to how it was to installing Linux on a, on a PC And Ubuntu hardware. made it easier. Exactly. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got... Uh, We've got a bunch of comments here in the in the live chat room. One guy says uh, Ubuntu Droid, Ubuntu Droid, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a Droid. I like I like Android and Ubuntu uh, and Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> nice guys. Uh, anything else in the uh, news document? Yeah, yeah. Right, what do we how got? How could you forget about this? The Boxy Box oh, has a release date. Saddens me. That's how I, I know. About so it. how could you forget about it? Just I guess. I guess if you put it like the way you put it, uh -huh. they have a release date. That's good. That makes me like a light at the end of the well, tunnel. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a gamer. Whenever we finally find out that, that there's you a release date for something. You at least know what to look for. Right. Yeah. And we so, know when to put it on our Christmas list and things like that. We've covered the Boxy Box once or twice on the show before. And I did, did a, a pretty in-depth review of it. Once. I did an yeah. in-depth review. And um, so later on in this episode, we're going to be doing a review of Xbox XBMC, mm -hmm. which is which is what Boxy is based off of. Mm -hmm. um, both of which but at run the same time, kind of still a competitor yeah, to Boxy yeah, Box. Yeah, sure. So Boxybox was developing their own hardware. It was going to be something you could set up in your home entertainment system. And uh, it was a little funky box. It's still going to be a little funky it box. It looks like a cube that's sinking into the ground. That's exactly what they were going for. They uh, are going to be featuring all of the HD formats you might come to know and love. It's going to be running Linux with a boxy UI on top of it. Mm -hmm. Supposedly HD video playback, flash playback, all that stuff. Yeah, all the good stuff. Very. Aw it's got this keyboard that you flip over, and it's got a full QWERTY keyboard on the mm -hmm. backside of it. That's genius, you guys. Right. I mean, that's just smart. <clears throat> Anyways, so they have had a delay until November for the boxy box. So if you've been <laughs> looking to get yourself a prepackaged, awesome Linux-running multimedia server that I freaking love... The you social want, side of it is, I think, one of the, the coolest things. The integration is actually it. pretty cool. So, but I gotta say, the you know the the shape of the box is still a complete turnoff okay. because yep. it can't be an integrated part of your entertainment center. You can't slide it in there between your DVD player. I know. You know, I have the same complaint. Everything. I have the it's same. It's gotta sit out on top. I have the same complaint with the PlayStation Three though, because the PlayStation Three kind of has, has that, that curved top. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gotta be on top. But then if you have this and a PS3, I'm I, which I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. At Both all. of them have to be on top. I, I think that sucks, yeah. but um, I know that the hard, the the thing is, I have right now, I have a PC hooked up to my TV that I have XBMC and Boxy on. Yeah, both but, of them. Yeah, but it's loud, it's clunky, it needs to be rebooted. This is going to be a silent little box that just runs 24-7, mm -hmm. very low power, doing Boxy, running Linux, <coughs> and that's just going to be really cool. Now, you've been basically waiting for this since you guys did your big review um, Months. Six months ago, maybe. Yep, yep. Um, the fact that this is not going to be coming out for another six months, it makes me nervous that things like Google TV and Apple TV might completely blow it out of the water before it even lands. Especially Google TV. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think Logitech's supposed to be shipping something late summer. Boy. Boy, I know. I bet I bet the guys at Box. You would think that the recent announcement and unveil of Google TV would actually kick these guys into gear and make them really punch you know it what up their a response notch and get was? ready. Which I extremely, extremely respect. You know what their response was to Google Pull it TV? Back. No, they're re well, apparently, yeah. Apparently yeah. they want to do some re re uh, refining. No, mm -hmm. they said, you know what? Oh, hey, check out Google TV. Hmm. Maybe we'll make an app for that. We'll just make a boxy app. So you could just run it on your boxy box. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, I mean, why not? 
let them. This is what I love about Boxy. Boxy lets you run it on your own hardware. Boxy lets you run it on the Apple TV if you want to hack it. And they they actively have to make a version to run on that. Yeah. So they are totally. They know what you're doing, and they're they they encourage it. And 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 there's like, oh yeah, this awesome competitor. Well, you know what? They can run third party apps. So let's do it. And because the the uh, unlike the Apple TV, the Google TV is an open platform, so it's literally just going to be an app you install. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. That is pretty respectable, and I think it it also says something further about them that they didn't use the hype of Google TV in that manner in their announcement. They right. didn't say, "And we're also going to be able to run Google." Right? You know? Yep. They're yep. just they're them. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with these guys. I'm impressed with the product. Mm-hmm. <sighs> we'll see. We'll but see. it's a long ways it's, away. They, they a lot like, can change in the next six a months. A couple of major. Um, Shaky tactical errors. The shape of the box is an issue. Mm-hmm. So not being able to stack it is a big problem. But it is really cool looking. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll give them that. Yeah, and it's it's supposed, it's got a neat aesthetic to it's it. It's supposed to be even, uh, and it's supposed to be a lot better in person. People at CES said that it it has a shiny aspect to it. The boxy logo glows, but it's not this overly bright glow that would bother you hmm. in the dark. It's a very nice, pleasant like I'm intelligent thinking kind of mm-hmm. glow. So it sounds it sounds aesthetically pleasing. But you're right. Yeah. Somebody asked in the chat room just now who makes the boxy box and it's by d-link yep they primarily make um networking peripherals as far as i know mm-hmm. things like routers yeah and, d-link and has stuff. played with the uh set top boxes that you can hook up to your tv and stream and most of them have been linux based they've just sucked it's always been underpowered and see this one looks like they're really trying to throw in some cpu to get uh some some good flash mm-hmm. playback and, and they're like trying that. to make it very affordable and very quiet which are two things that you just said are real big. Um, that's why I don't. That's why you don't want to put it on a PC every time. That's why I don't like having a PC, and that's why yeah. I don't have an Xbox 360 in my main living room because it's just too freaking loud. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good story. I like yeah. that. And Chris, that's all the news for this week. So we just got done talking about the Boxy Box a little bit. Now, Boxy is based on the Xbox Media Center software mm-hmm. um, that's been around for quite a while. Which has been officially shortened to drop the X-B-M-C. Xbox. XBMC. Yeah, to XBMC. Yeah. So um, we've been getting a lot of requests for... Uh, Chris did a review of this back in 2008. Yeah, yeah. A long, a long time ago, I talked about XBMC, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a pretty popular view, uh, video on YouTube. But that video honestly did kind of skew more towards boxy it did and uh you've been a fanboy of boxy for a long time and then boxy released an update and we covered it in linux action show and i thought you know what we deserve x B- xbmc deserves its own specific mention in the linux action show because it has got to be one of the absolute best media center software mm-hmm. packages out there well and just the facts that boxy that you're a fan of is based on xbmc Kind totally. of lends itself Absolutely. to the fact. Yeah. Now, XBMC is, uh, despite <clears throat> the name, not for the Xbox. In fact, they've completely dropped all support for the original Xbox. Give me a little history of that so because I find genesis. this interesting. Yeah, the genesis is that they came out with uh, a release for the hacked Xbox. They wanted to produce a really good media center. Not the 360. No, the, no, original. the original Xbox. They yeah. could hack really easily. They wanted a great <coughs> media center for it, and they created one. It was so popular that as the original Xbox began to sort of, um, you know, age, get old, <laughs> slow, replaced, yep. they came out with a version for Linux of XBMC. And they produced it under Linux, and it started to get more and more popular. And as it sort of re- reached the beta stage, they came out with Mac and Windows versions. Cool. And uh, now it continues to have... I'm a big um, fan of, of software that crosses the platform I lines. totally I think agree. That's, that's great stuff. And really, uh, in XBMC's case, there's advantages to each platform. Yeah. Each platform, you just kind of have to look at, and that's what I'm going to cover. Okay. You kind of have to look at your pros and cons and figure out how you want to run it and what you're going to be doing. Now you've got it running. You've got. Your I own. do. I've got it on an, on an Ubuntu box in mm-hmm. my living room, which um, is 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 pretty great. And and I have a I have a particular use scenario where I don't need live TV. Okay. So I'm going to put that out there right now. There are people working on ways to have live TV into XBMC. At the moment, the, the, the default install does not support live streaming TVs. So we're but because like it's Myth open TV source, might. can you get a plug They're in They're already that? working. Yeah, oh, okay. already, yeah, people are already working That's on cool. that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's something that I know. I just happen to be one of the few people that, that don't, don't need live TV. I only need to play stored content on my network. Right. Or, or off YouTube and things like that. You know, I think that's the way of the future, to be honest. It's full media on demand. Yeah. Because yeah. if you know there's something out there you want, you just go get it, and Second, then you've got it. Secondarily, uh, it needs to have high spousal approval. Yes. Um, because if she can't sit down and operate the media center and the TV... So it's got to have like a, a low 
headroom for entry. Yeah, you yeah. got to be able to sit down we've and got, use it. We've got some clips here of the uh, the interface, which is which is fully themable. So mm -hmm. you know what we're showing you here isn't necessarily uh, the only interface. That's of course just like the Linux desktop. There are lots of really really great themes. You can do a cover Back flow. Again, I like that m opening menu. Th what we're showing you right now is uh, XBMC running on uh, Linux Mint, and uh, which is honestly the, f the best way you should go because one of the nice if you get the right version of Linux Mint it comes with a lot of the video codecs that I had to mm -hmm. install to get XBMC to play everything I had this I looks, probably should have just gone Mint this looks really slick I gotta say it, it just like Boxy it has the ability to go out and scrape uh, based on file name and things like that all of the individual episode names get all of the artwork get awesome backgrounds mm -hmm. so it really turns a widescreen high-definition TV into a presentation of your media collection. One might even say a media center. Uh, one very, very well might <laughs> say that. It also keeps track of what you've already seen. It gives you plot summaries mm -hmm. on an individual episode level. It gives you the artworks of each individual episode. Um, really just fantastic work there. If you've got a lot of media content in that way, that's you're never going to go wrong with XBMC or Box. I also just really I like these little uh, widgets in the corners, the little overlays. They're, yeah. they're just always there. Yep. I, yep. Yeah. And, but they're not. The thing is, intrusive. what we're looking at right oh, now think. is uh, we're looking at a version that's a CoverFlow uh, interface to XBMC. So now that, this person has started a movie, and this is kind of a. This yep. is cool. And it gives you all of you can get you can have it completely just nice and easy friendly, or you can pull out all of the nitty gritty geeky information like your frame rate, your bit rate. Your I just want to say resolution. real quick that 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 movie was a gigantic disappointment as a Beatles fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was the. Uh, yeah, the musical thing. Yeah. Terrible. Um. This cover flow, <laughs> this cover flow that they're showing, and you notice also why you continue to browse the movie keeps playing. Mm -hmm. uh, the cover Up there flow in the corner. scenario that they're yep. showing there is not very good for large collections, but again, just a different theme. Mm -hmm. Where XBMC I think has a big strength over Boxy, though Boxy is trying to counter this with a Boxy app marketplace, is they allow for plugins to be installed, and you just check into their plugin repo through the XBMC interface. Hey, load this up. It's another different and user. It, it, it does it through uh, SVN in the back end, so it's a really kind of cool way to stay totally up to date with what people are working on. Mm -hmm. You can work this in too with an Android application or an iPhone application that is an amazing remote control. It does it, it connects over Wi-Fi and the XBMC software allows you to connect. You can turn it on and then it accepts connections over an HTTP Apache web server. Mm -hmm. And on your Android phone or your iPhone, you get the most amazing freaking remote control. Why? Because it's all IP based. So on your mother effing remote control, you have your entire movie collection or your entire TV collection on your phone and you can sit here and scroll it on your mother effing Android and you can choose what video you want to watch and then all of a sudden it'll start playing on your TV. It is the freaking future in your living room. <laughs> and in your hand. And if you have an <laughs> iPad, they have iPad apps mm -hmm. which are just these gigantic interface window into your media, li media library and the spousal approval at that point when you can hand them your Android droid and they can browse the media collection on their droid, like while mm -hmm. she's walking around, maybe she's getting ready to watch dinner, she can just sit here and thumb through it. Amazing. Yeah, and so then, you don't have to be sitting in front of your television. She to was look actually through. upstairs getting Dylan ready to come downstairs and was reviewing the Android phone. And she's like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'd like to watch that one. Hits the button. It starts queued up downstairs. She hits pause. It's all ready to go. She walks down. and she's coming around the corner, she hits play on the Android device and it starts playing as she walks into the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, just so freaking high tech, right? We live in the future. I know, dude. <laughs> uh, it's 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 fantastic HD playback. That's gonna more depend on your codex. So go with the Linux distro that's got good codex, or mm -hmm. go out and get the Fluendo pack. If you run it on Windows, one of the advantages that you will have is the ability to stream Netflix movies, and Through that's not via, available via a plugin, and that's not available yet under Linux due to be it being wrapped in Silverlight and DRM. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. Okay. Um, Many, many different themes out there for XBMC, some of, them, some of which I don't like, uh, but they all support this extended functionality with the remote devices. Mm -hmm. So they all have like messaging pop-ups. So if I get a phone call and I have my droid connected running as a remote, the caller ID shows up on the TV. Well, Remember that could like, be annoying, but I can see how it would also too. be cool. Remember like in Back to the Future when they were watching the TV yeah. and he gets a call from Needles and yeah. he's got the caller ID up on the... We live in the future! We're living <laughs> Back to the Future, buddy! It's powered by Linux! Now, if they awesome. could only get us some dehydrated pizzas. I know, right? Hydrate and the level four, comes from, yeah. 
<laughs> hydrate level four. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, so they have uh, they have this totally plug-in architecture. So all this different stuff comes in all these different <coughs> media scrapers, library management tools, Twitter apps, all this different stuff that geeks would want. Okay, so tell me. Is it really easy to use? Is it really easy to plug in? Like you say that it's got spouse approval, but you've already done all. A the lot setup. of it depends on um, your comfort level with Linux. If you're going to do a Linux machine, it's okay. not hard. It's in the repo, or you can download the most latest version. And then it's a matter of pointing at your media library, which honestly, depending on your theme, can be really hard. Mm -hmm. I tried a theme where I could not find the buttons to scan a new media library folder. Whoa! Yeah, that theme gets a thumbs down. That theme got a thumbs down, but I added. Um, I got some Chuck DVDs and yeah. I cataloged them and it went out automatically and downloaded all of remember Chuck season one? Yeah. Well I put that on the server. I'm working my way through it right now. And uh, I turned on XBMC after having put season one on the server uh -huh. and I just saw a little nice notification thing pop up saying going out and fetching all the information. I just watched it go beep, 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 like through all the episodes of season one. Bah, 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 got bah, all, bah, all the bah, box bah, art and everything. Got all the box the art, all the episode descriptions before I was awesome. even able to get to that section in the TV. And, and let me tell you it's not a small library, okay? It's scanning that library extremely efficiently. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not quite as fast as Boxy does, but very fast. Very, very cool stuff. All right. Um, I, I'm, I'm so happy with XBMC. I'm probably going to wipe and go to Mint to do a couple other things because I want to change the hardware a little bit too. But I have to give uh, Ubuntu mad props. I had some trouble with another machine doing HDMI out. And mm -hmm. on this machine, I forget, what the, it's a little bit older of an ATI card. I think it's a 4000 series. Okay. Seems to be working like a champ. Uh, just audio out, video out, everything out of this. So, HDMI in port. your original review back in '08, mm -hmm. you were very heavily into Boxy. Mm -hmm. It was clearly the 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 winner. It had Advantage Boxy written all over that review, um, f just far and away. Oh, another by thing leaps and bounds. But how do I know where you're going? Let me just say one thing in the chat room real quick. I also want to mention that XBMC also acts as a UNP client and server. And what that means... UPNP. UN, UPNP. Yeah. So there's devices on the network that support UNP. Like U, UPNP is supported by a few Linux media players, by the Xbox 360, by the PlayStation 3, by the Wii, and um, by a lot of Android apps. Well, they'll automatically discover media servers and be able to stream media to and from them. Mm -hmm. So now these devices are communicating. So the X, XBMC server is acting like a gateway to my media library for all my other devices on my network. Oh, oh, neat. So what you were like asking... Like an intermediary. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was going to ask which one you would still recommend. Boxy. If somebody was in the market... I would do Boxy because Boxy also has this plugins and abilities to do apps, only it's a more it's more of a curated environment. Almost, It's almost more like Android Marketplace versus Apple App Store, whereas the Apple App Store, it's not, a, it's not locked down like the App Store, but it's mm -hmm. a little more hand-picked. And so the quality level is a little higher. Whereas on XBMC, I was literally checking plugins out. Now, it's all automated. I just select an option and it does it. But it's checking plugins out through mm -hmm. SVN and in some cases actually building them. Okay. And that is as so fresh code as it gets. More of a tinkerer's toy. Yes, yes, so if you're more yeah. comfortable with that kind so of stuff, you TV, might want to go with XBMC. A TV in my office, yeah. I'm doing XBMC, no question. All right. A TV in the living room where my wife and her family has to come over and operate it. And she also really digs the social integration with her family. Hey, yeah. I just watched this episode of Glee. And I liked it. So Yeah. yeah. She digs that, so I, I can't really take that back. Plus, you combine that Boxy is going to be offering very soon a complete plug-in solution at hopefully a reasonable price with the mm -hmm. Boxy box. To me, in my opinion, that just feels like a more complete solution. I'm going to be able to plug in and walk away. Right. Because at the end of the day, while XBMC looks awesome and has awesome functionality, I want my TV to be as low-key and as relaxing as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm going to geek out with XBMC in my office, in my main room. I think I'm going to stick with Boxy. So while my, my review now skews much more favorably XBMC, they've done a great amount of work. It's still, it's still a tinkerer's niche. I, I think so now. Or I set it up once and forget it, which is what my approach is right now in the living room. That's why I'm going to redo it to Mint. So that way I just want it done once. Okay. And I'm going to uh, just tr I'm going to try it working with the wife because she does like... Um, uh, her comment was something to the effect of she feels like she can see more of the media. Like XBMC huh. does a better job of showcasing the media with the with the dynamic entire backgrounds that change and and all that stuff. It just felt so much more integrated as a showcase for the media. Whereas whereas Boxy just had an awesome list of your media. It wasn't like this whole dynamic experience. Okay, XBMC is more of a media experience, I think, in a lot of ways. That's a good review. Well, there I, you have I it. like that okay. summary. All right, everyone, I'd love to hear. 
what you have to mm -hmm. uh, say about XBMC and Boxy. And uh, we're always following this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, we do that. Tell people where they can leave us a little feedback. Well, you can go over to JupiterColony.com. That's a forum on the internet where you can not only give us feedback, How but you can also interact that? with the rest of your Jupiter Broadcasting fan peers. There you have it. Mm -hmm. and, and and if you're using XBMC, Boxy, maybe you're using something else, let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, John739 in the chat room said something about CMBC. Now, perhaps mm. that was just one letter off from XBMC, or perhaps that is an entire media server that I don't know anything about. We don't about. know. <laughs> but you can go and yell at me at jupitercolony.com. Yeah. All right. That's our look at XBMC. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. And I wanted to say we've got a couple of things in the works over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. If you haven't checked there in a while, it is time to go back. First of all, if you're into video games... You've got to check out Legend of the Stoned Owl, Lotso. That's our new show, and um, it just came out last week, and we did our top three co-op games. Mm -hmm. we, did a, we did our top three, so if you like those kinds of things, we've done a so few So what you guys usually too. do is like uh, big video game news, mm -hmm. reviews, and like an editorial yeah. section. Yeah, yeah, we lean heavily on the editorial. We figure you know, you're not going to have the late-breaking gaming news every two weeks right. on Lotso. Right. That's just not going to happen. Right. So uh, you could have gotten that anywhere, so now it's really more about let's talk about games, mm -hmm. let's discuss the issues around them discuss what new games are introducing to the gaming you know experience what ha has the bar just been raised did they lower did they do what they said they were going to do right those kinds of things are all over on lotso yep. now we're really excited too because uh we're right now we're in the process of beta testing a whole new show called jupiter at night and jupiter at night is going to be a nightly broadcast a live nightly broadcast live nightly monday through thursday mm -hmm. broadcast and uh, it's going to be late at night, as the, nine, as the name would imply. We're thinking somewhere between a 10 o'clock to midnight Pacific yep. um, window. We haven't nailed yep. that just down just yet. The show format is still in um, early stages of development. If you'd like to watch a couple episodes, we've only put a couple out, mm -hmm. and give us some feedback because we're trying to really develop a really tight show here for mm -hmm. everyone. You, YouTube.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. In there, there's going to be a couple of the episodes. Yeah. You'll see one with Jeremy and I, one with Alan and I. We're probably going to have a little bit of somewhat of a rotating cast. Or like we were talking about maybe a few ideas where uh, it'll be guest hosts come in and talk about like a movie review or mm -hmm. a game like in the show itself. Right. And we're going to feature a lot of your community feedback. That's going to be a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Errata. So if we say something really dumb on Linux Action Show, we're going to make a correction in that show because... Part of the problem with Linux Action Show is by the time the next week comes around, it's been too long to talk about that. Anymore. And there's so much new news to talk about, new things to talk about that you don't want to go back to the week before. Exactly. Usually. Yeah. So we'll feature the errata in the Daily Show. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to throw in some interesting news stories from the day to sort of cap off your day. We're going to have some interesting science. We're going to take a geek science slant. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole idea will be you can watch it live, interact with us, cap off your night, or if you want something to watch in the morning to get sort of a jump start from what happened yesterday and get all caught up mm -hmm. you can download the show and, and listen or, or watch it on your way to work whatever you want to do but uh, like chris said earlier a big part of that show is going to be what do you find interesting yeah so we're definitely seeking feedback so the shows uh the pilot and the beta mm -hmm. and there'll probably be future betas <laughs> are over at youtube.com slash yep. jupiter broadcast we're probably gonna launch that in about a week two weeks mm-hmm Officially, of yeah. we're not quite sure. We, so you've got time to give us your ideas yep. and some topics that you might want to cover. Yep. We just, you know, we want to do this one right, and so mm -hmm. uh, please do help us out with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that just about wraps up this episode of the Linux Action Show. That was a great episode. Thank you, sir. If I do say so myself. Thank you for filling in for Brian. That was kind of a last minute thing. He is his wife went back to school. She graduated. Yep. And uh, they're having so celebration. So not only this is week. she smart, but she's got a piece of paper to prove it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's out celebrating with her, and they're doing family stuff today. So Jeremy, mm -hmm. uh, at the last minute, sat in for him. And you did an excellent job, sir. Why, well, thank you. All right, everyone. Well, we come out every Sunday at jupiterbroadcasting.com, and we hope to see you there next week.